medical cases treated on the frontier were no different than those in the city. In many cases, the illness was imaginary. And just as frequently, there were those who took advantage of such people, as was discovered by Rex Allen, who stars as the Frontier Doctor. Pardon me. Miss Foster? Yes. Dr. Baxter sent me over to pick you up. The stage to Rising Springs may be hours to get to here, and he needs you bad. Oh, that's nice of him. Oh, the rig's right over there. I'll take your things. Thank you. Young man, did I hear you say you were going to Rising Springs? Yes, ma'am. I wonder if I might go with you. You have any objections, ma'am? Oh, certainly not. I'm sure Doc Baxter wouldn't mind. Here, get in. Thank you so much. I'm the territorial nurse. There seems to be quite a spread of diphtheria in Rising Springs. I've been sent over to help him. Oh, how wonderful. Such important work must give you a good deal of satisfaction. It does. Harper! Well, surely this isn't Dr. Baxter's place. Not exactly, but it's the end of the line for you. Oh, Ma. Hello, son. Give me that medical bag, dear. No. You heard Ma. Oh, this is Miss Foster, the territorial nurse. Get her out of the buggy. Come on. Roll up your sleeve. No, you don't know what you're doing. Oh, don't I? Don't worry. Ma was a nurse before she had a license to take her away. Oh. Oh. I've just given you a mild opiate. Being a nurse, you know that you'll drop off to sleep in a very short time. Take her in the house, Harper. Come on, Ma. Place. Put my luggage in that vaccine box there on the porch and then get out of here. All right, Ma, I'll see you later. Didn't get near as bad as you thought it was going to, did it? It didn't. Where's the candy? Oh, I almost forgot. Here you are. Take any color you like. I got a little brother. And I got a big sister. Better take one for your mother. Thanks, Dr. Bill. You come back and see me, will you? Dr. Baxter? Yes. I'm Miss Foster. Well, how do you do? I'm real happy to see you. You're a little early, aren't you? Well, I'm terribly glad to be here. One of the ranchers gave me a lift. You find the people around here real friendly. The vaccine the Board of Health sent with me is out front. Good. This diphtheria has been spreading like wildfire. You know, I've been working 24 hours a day. That's why I sent for help. Mm. The board knows what you've been accomplishing, and I'm here to take over some of that work. I'm sure you'll be a great help. Uh, I have a room reserved for you at the hotel. Well, how thoughtful, Doctor. I'll get the medicine and take you in so you can get settled right away. Thank you. Uh, candy? <laughs> Hello, 
Come on. Harper. Hi, Ma. Miss Foster? She's all right. I tied her up in the cabin. I'll go back up there later today. Come on, come on. It's your move. Hey, you gotta jump me. Not if I don't want to. That's not the way I play. Rules or nothing. I got you covered. <laughs> Stop it, you two fools. Now, have no fighting. Do you want a hick town sheriff to arrest Ma Bell? Haven't you learned anything since you were a little boy? Besides, you two have got to learn to control yourselves now. We've got to move with extreme care. Why can't we just move right in and take them? Honey, because Rising Springs is an isolated place. There are only three roads leading into it. In case of a mistake, they'll be waiting for us on all three. How'd you make out with Dr. Baxter, Ma? Oh, fine. If he gets tough, we'll take care of him. We'll get the call of diamonds, break up the collection, sell them. We'll take care of you the rest of your life, Ma. Ma, you'll never have to work again. Oh, my wonderful boys. <laughs> I waited for you all day yesterday. Sorry, Miss Caldwell. We've had quite a siege of diphtheria around here. In fact, this is my fifth call this morning. Diphtheria? We wouldn't have it on you, would you? No, you're safe if you've been inoculated. I have had the most terrible night. Black spots before my eyes and hot and cold running flashes. Mm-hmm. What did you have for supper, Miss Caldwell? Well, it was a simple spread. Onion soup, some trout, some venison. Peach belba. Well, you don't have a temperature, but you should have. I'm afraid it's just a simple case of indigestion, Miss Caldwell. Skip lunch and try a light supper tonight. Is that all you have to tell me? Any fool could have told me that. Why can't I find a doctor who knows what's wrong with me? Please, Miss Caldwell, remember your blood pressure. I would pay anything, but I must have something in return. A nurse, Miss Foster, will be out with some more medicine for you this afternoon. Instructions will be on the bottle. Good day. These doctors, they're all alike. Oh, they can fix a bloody nose or a broken leg. But when a patient is really sick, they're too lazy to do a thing about it. Where's that candy clover? Oh, I'll get it myself. And early. <laughs> I could say the same thing about you. I understand you left about 4 o'clock this morning. I haven't seen this old place looking that tidy in weeks. Well, considering what you've had on your hands, it's remarkably orderly. I wanted to get back as early as I could this morning. There's several school children coming in for inoculations. They just left. It's all taken care of. Here's the report. Well, bless your heart. That puts me about an hour ahead of schedule. Generally, I'm five hours behind. If I knew anything about human nature, you'd like to have a cup of coffee. I sure would. Here you are. Miss Foster, you're spoiling me. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm trying to help. It's about time somebody did. Oh, by the way, I have a patient, a hypochondriac, lives between here and town about a mile down the road, a Miss Nora Caldwell, famous socially. Did you ever hear of her? No, but I know the type. Sugar pills and lots of talk. Mix up some of that soda mat on top of the cabinet with some water and take it down to her this afternoon when you get time, will you? Well, I'll take care of Miss Caldwell. Don't you worry about the thing. I'd really appreciate it. I'll be back later this afternoon and take you into town. Thank you. Thank you. If ever in my life I played into the hands of desperate schemers, it was now. I couldn't have helped them any more if I'd been a member of the gang. That's it. Now you just relax. No one has ever given me this much relief before. 
My goodness, I've been here over an hour. Oh, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Come often, Miss Foster. I'll pay you anything. Oh, what beautiful diamonds. Are they wonderful? You couldn't be the Nora Caldwell. Yes, owner of the famous Caldwell Diamonds. Oh. <laughs> These came from the Habsburg family. I bought them in Vienna ten years ago. I never saw such beautiful diamonds in my life. They must be worth a fortune. At least $100,000. Clover, get me my jewels, please. Yes, yes. Now, I'll really show you something. Oh, but I shouldn't bother you any longer. Bother? You've done me more good than half the doctors in Europe and America. <laughs> I spent three years and several fortunes collecting these. <gasps> oh! That is from the Romanov collection. That's from Napoleon II. It, didn't I read someplace that you had copies made of all your jewels? That was supposed to be a secret. But because there were several diamond robberies, they threatened to cancel my insurance unless I had copies made in Paris. Well, I don't blame you for leaving the real diamonds back east. Oh, no, I couldn't do that. I love them too much. They're quite near. <sighs> well, I really must be going. Now, you be sure and take your medicine, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. I'll be waiting for you. <laughs> Goodbye, dear. <laughs> ah, lovely girl, isn't she? Yes, ma'am. To think I had to come to Rising Springs to get relief. <laughs> you feel better, Miss Colvin? Yes, I... Uh, no. Well, I have a little pain still right here. All right, my friends, who's going to have the last bottle? The last bottle of Aqualife. Aqualife, the new life, the liquid gateway to a painless existence. Now, friends, you know I'm not asking five dollars for the bottle. I'm not asking for the free Thank you so much for dropping me by, Doctor. This has been a very busy day. Very well. To a life free of aches and pains. How about you, friend? Why don't you take the last bottle? Go ahead, friend. You can't go wrong for a single dollar. Thank you very much, sir. Well, I'll see you in the morning, Doctor. Fancy seeing you here. Muffle of Dallas, Harry. Quite a surprise seeing you here. Come on into the hotel. I want to talk to you. Let's try it again. Boys, this is Harry Link, an old friend of mine. Howdy. Nice knowing you. Ma, you're a two fine boy. Knew you when you were little kikes. Your ma and I worked together on several jobs. What are you doing here, Harry? Don't tell me you're selling phony medicine. I guess I'm doing about the same thing you are, Dallas. Diamonds. You know how us hunters follow the big game? Forget it, Harry. We got here first. Now, how could I forget the biggest deal in the country? The Caldwell Collection. Look, why don't we join forces? Because we don't need you. Now, get out of here, Harry. And get out of town. Oh, no, I won't. Now, wait a minute, you two! Wait a minute! Hey, Dallas! Dallas, I was only talking! I'll get out of town! Well, we won't have to split the diamonds with him. You got to move fast, boys, before any more two-bit crooks try to move in on us. Get rid of him and come back here as soon as you can. What's with this old lady called up? Information we got's correct. She wears imitations of the real jewels, but the real stuff's out here with her someplace. Now the trick's to find a hiding place. I'll find out where they are. Bye, Mom. Goodbye, and be careful. Good morning. Good morning, Doctor. Oh, I'll get it, Doctor. Thank you. Ruth? Hello? Yes, this is Dr. Baxter. Well, he's very busy right now. Could I help you? This is Miss 
Foster, the territorial nurse. Oh? Yes, I see. Well, I, uh, I think maybe I'd better call the doctor. If you'll wait just a moment, please. Thank you. It's for you. I just dropped by to see if there was anything you wanted. I'm supposed to be at school. No, you go ahead. Oh, well, that can wait till tomorrow. Oh? Well, I'll come on out this afternoon, then. About an hour. Bye. Bonnie, give me the sheriff's office. Uh, this is Doc Baxter. I wonder if you'd give me some information. What kind of a gun was it that killed Harry Link? What kind of a gun? The bullet was from a 41 Derringer fired at close range. Why? I was just curious. I discovered that my nurse, Miss Foster, carries a Derringer in her handbag. Probably for self-defense. She gets calls at night, doesn't she? Yeah, sometimes. But I saw her going to the hotel with Harry Link shortly before he was found dead. The paper said he was a jewel thief. That was our information. Well, you know about the famous Caldwell Diamond Collection. Miss Foster's been spending a lot of unnecessary time with Miss Caldwell. I don't know why, but it worries me. I wish you'd see what you could find out about Miss Foster. I'd appreciate it. Sure thing, Bill. Let you know as soon as we get a report. Bye. Doc, I found a girl. She's hurt bad. Can you follow me? Lead the way. Come on, get it. I was afraid to move her. Any idea who she is? No, I don't. I was just out hunting some strays and run across her. Been pretty badly beaten up. Get into town, tell the sheriff to come over to my place. I'll take her there. Sure, Doc. Hurry up. She's gonna be mad at you. Uh, uh. Send for me, Doc. This the girl Johnson found? Dr. Baxter. I must see Dr. Baxter. <coughs> Sheriff? That's right, Miss. I must see Dr. Baxter. I'm Dr. Baxter. Who are you? I'm Miss Foster. I'm the territorial nurse you sent for. Well, that's impossible. Miss Foster's been here for three days. She's an imposter. She and two men kidnapped me, took me up to a camp. They tied me up. You have any idea why? No. I have. Uh, I think you have too, Bill. Will you be all right here for a while? Of course, Doctor. I'm going with you. This is partly my business, too. I'll take it. I'll take it, Clover. It must be that wonderful Miss Foster. Come in, Miss Foster. Hello, Miss Foster. Oh, I don't believe These are my I... two sons, and they'll do exactly as I tell them. Oh, how nice. Well, won't you sit down? Get some tea, Clover. Uh -huh. You're not going anywhere. Huh? There's been a slight change of our plans, Miss Caldwell. We haven't much time. Time? Time for what? For you to tell me where the Rio collection is. Why, Miss Foster, I can't believe it. You after my diamonds? Yes, 
do my kids and me a lot more good than an old wreck like you. Now, where are they? Oh, I'm going to pay. No, you're not. <laughs> Shoot me. Shoot me. But I'll never tell you. You will hang for murder. Oh, we wouldn't do anything as foolish as that. You've been neurotic all your life, going around thinking you're sick. Well, I'm going to give you a shot that'll make you sicker than you ever dreamed. Oh, no, it's inhuman. First, your legs will be paralyzed. Then your blood will turn to fire. And then every nerve in your body will scream out. Oh. No, no, I'll tell. More like it. Clover, Clover, get my jewel case. You mean it, Miss Clover? Yes, yes. yes. Go with her. Those are the fakes. Where's the real stuff? Where is it? These are the real ones. I never could bear an imitation. I thought when I saw this before it was too good for an imitation. What do you think, Vince? Hey, the McCoy, Mom. Take off the rest of that stuff. Oh, no, no. Leave me just this necklace. It's in my favorite. You're right, a cool woman like you doesn't need it. Well, what are we going to do with the sheriff and the doctor? Kill them if they come through the door. Get up the way. Come on, tell them to come in. Put that down. Tell them to come in. Oh! Getting away through the alley. You better get him, Doc. I can't. She needs a doctor. I may be able to save her. You're lying. All right. I'll make a deal with you. If you get back to her, I'll throw out the diamonds. No deal. Not unless you come along, too. Remember, your mother's dying a little every minute you stole. It's up to you. All right. All right, I'm coming. Throw out your gun. And come out with your hands up. You'd better hurry. Come on, tell us. That would do everything. Oh, hello, Dr. Baxter. Hello. She ain't kidding this time. Well, I'm sure she isn't. Miss Caldwell. Oh, well, hello, Doctor. I'd like you to meet the real Miss Foster. Oh, how do you do, Miss Foster? After the horrible experience I've had, I am a total wreck. Oh, I can understand that. I thought you could. Why, last night... Well, I, I, uh, I have a call to make. I'll pick you up in a half hour. Goodbye, Doctor. Bye. Now, he's a very nice young man. 
But like all doctors, they don't understand their patients. Please mix me some nine and some five, will you? Number nine is lemon water, and number five is sassafras tea. Well, it had been quite an experience. Dallas Bell, alias Miss Foster, was tried and convicted. Her two sons, Harper and Vance, were sentenced with her for the murder of Harry Link. They were all sent to the penitentiary for the rest of their natural lives. As for Nora Caldwell, she is still enjoying the worst of health. But I'm sure the medical profession will never be able to cure.